Welcome CSC 143. This is video conference one of the spring 2019 quarter and I'm recording this video today on April 3rd because we are only going to be having a video conference once a week. This first week it'll be held on April 7th so instead I'm going to try to make a video for the other day to follow along with. So um, in this case, I'm actually doing it before I've done the video conference, so uh, it's going to be a little bit different. I've done this once before when I when I tried to do video conference, it wasn't perfect, but um, we're just gonna we're just gonna try it. Hopefully, it'll work well. So uh, you need one of the things I want to make sure in video conference is that I see each and every one of you using Eclipse. Okay, you are not going to be able to survive in this class if you don't have this mastered. So if you haven't already, install Eclipse, go through the Hello World process and then um, follow along with these examples. Okay, so we're going to create a new Java project. Each week I'm going to have you create a project. We're going to call it, going to call it VC and then with the, the week, so this is going to be VC1, actually probably no space. And I always like to use the project folder as a root for source and class files. That becomes especially relevant in 143 because almost all of our projects are going to be reading files and it makes it much more complicated if you have multiple directories. So please use the project folder as root for source and class files whenever possible. And then we're going to right click on this and create a new class and we're also going to call it VC1. And then we'll go ahead and create a main. Alright, let me hide this window now. and Hide this window so we can just focus on this. So what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be focusing on class creation. Okay, that's what, what chapter 8 was about. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a Java doc. So slash star star enter gives you a Java doc format. And then this is going to be uh, demonstrating uh, Java class creation. And please always get, get rid of anything that says to do. I will frequently be giving you files that have the word to do in them. That means you're to search and destroy all those to do's by replacing them with your own code. Okay. This is a common thing that we use in the industry too. So don't be leaving those around. All right. So what classes are we going to be creating? Um, well, first of all, let me talk about how you can put multiple classes in a file. Normally in Java, you have one class per file. It's great. And that's definitely the way I recommend you do it in the real world. But here in this class, it's much easier for me to accept one Java file than three or four. So what we're going to do, normally you would say public class uh, point, right? But you can see already it's complaining because the, pub, the public type point must be defined in its own file. But there is a way around this. Just get rid of the public. Okay, so that will allow point to be used within this file. It will not be exported externally, but that's fine because we're just going to be trying to do things in one file anyways. So we're going to have a, a point class and um, we should be able to do this here as well. And also I'm going to hit control A, control I just to make sure that that's the right indent. I still find it a little bit funny. Oh yeah, right. This is a, this is a Java doc for the entire class, whereas this is a Java doc for the function. That's why there are different levels. Okay, so this is a point class uh, to hold an XY point. And now, um, so this is not necessarily, you know, pretty much the point class is pretty straightforward. So I'm not going to, I'm going to use examples from the book. They're not necessarily going to be the exact same. Um, in this case, it will be. But uh, I want you to get used to creating your own classes because they're not they're not all going to be classes out of the book right so uh, let's go ahead and do this though so for private data fields we are going to create uh, integers for X and integer for Y okay and I always like to see different sections for constructors getters and setters Two string. Okay, so if you know these three things are coming, then it's going to help you. I, I see a lot of students who struggle from 142. It's fairly straightforward. So constructors. Um, I'm going to go ahead. No, I won't bore you. I'm just going to go ahead and insert, and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's my point constructor. Now, um, really, you do want Javadoc on these because if you do Javadoc, I'll show you later. If you do Javadoc, it'll automatically provide this help to people. So um, this will be 
uh, just point x y. I also want to give a um, a constructor a, a, an empty constructor. So I'm not going to take any parameters here, and I'm instead going to call. So we're going to take these and just put in zero and zero. And by the way, uh, you guys haven't learned super yet, but that's coming up in chapter nine. Here, that's the calling the super constructor. Uh, it's not actually necessary in this simple example, so uh, I guess I'll go ahead and delete those. Okay, so let's comment this as well. Please always give you give a Java doc comment. All right, so. Um, just to quickly illustrate what's going on with Javadoc here, I just put in a couple of lines here to call the point constructor. And notice what it says here, point constructor with no args. Point constructor from XY. That's exactly what I put here. So in Eclipse, Javadoc will automatically pr be processed. And then when you're trying to use your class, it'll actually tell you what you put here. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's go to the getters and setters here. And all right, so I've come back from generating the getters and setters, get x, set x, get y, set y. And um, so please have a, a, a get and a set for every variable that you have. And uh, you know what, I just realized I didn't make these private. Now, in the, I think in the Java classes, they are actually public as well. But we're going to make them private so to, to enforce that we're doing the get and set. Um, Finally, let's generate the two string here. So the two string is going to point, print out the word of the, the class, and then a square brackets followed by each field x and y and the values here. And please always use, it's not required, but in my class always use this dot whenever you're referring to either a method or a, a variable, an, uh, a class method or a class variable. Because at this point in your education, uh, students have a lot of troubles figuring out what is the difference between a class and just a bunch of variables. And the difference is the this, okay? This is the object that you're creating. So make sure you use that or I will mark it wrong. All right, so now this has gone by very quickly. What I wanna do though is to actually take a look at how this process works so that you can understand it for any class, all right? So this process is completely 100% mechanical. There is no thought required or allowed in this process. Let's step through what this is, okay? So the only two things that you need to know to generate an entire class are, number one, what is the name of the class? Point. Number two, what are the names and types of the member variables, int x and int y. Could you believe me that those two things alone are enough to generate the entire class? Well, they are, okay? And they are, let's take a look at what ne what's necessary, okay? So let's skip this one for the moment. Let's just assume that we have the point constructor for each parameter, okay? So, we're, so you, it's always gonna be public, okay? You take the name of the class, okay? That's the first thing I told you you had to have. And then you take the, the data types and the names of all of your parameters. You put them right here. Then for each of those parameters, okay, you do this dot name of parameter equals name of parameter for each parameter. That's all you need for the constructor. The getters and setters are even simpler, right? So for every name of a parameter, int x, you just have get x and set x. Okay, the setter takes that int x, and then the setter does this dot x dot equals x, and the getter just returns this dot x. Okay, that's true for the get, for the uh, for the x and the y. And then the last thing, this two string. Okay, it's always good. By the way, override. That's something that the compiler puts in to tell it that it's actually called a compiler directive. It's not technically required. But I, uh, I, Eclipse always puts it in. It's to tell the compiler that this function is overriding an existing function. We'll learn about that in chapter nine. Um, when you write your code, I don't want you putting in at override. Okay, do not do not put that in. Uh, I the IDE may do it, but I don't want you putting it in. Okay, at, at least at this point in the game. So it's always going to be public. It's always going to be a string. It's always going to be two string. All of this, this entire line here, 
is always just stock. Doesn't matter what the class is. Then all I have to do is return what's the name of the class. Okay, that was the th first thing I told you. And then the second thing, you take those each of those variables and you just put them, this dot x and this dot y, preceded by the, the names of the variable, x equals y equals, okay? That's the entirety of it. You can actually generate this entire thing completely automatically, okay? And so uh, it's always frustrating to me when people have troubles learning how to code up their classes. It's very, very simple. Don't think about it, okay? Just understand that process. Now, that was a little bit fast, so we're going to do another example now with something that you're less familiar with, and um, we're going to go through that class process too. Before we get there, I thought I would just finish this up here. So we created two points here, and um, let's also throw in a translate, just like the book had, to make it a little bit clear. So I had another section for mutators. So this is going to be public, and then uh, it's not going to return anything. It's going to be a void, and let's call it translate, and we'll have and int x int y. So those are going to be our offsets. So let's go ahead and generate the Java doc for this as well. Shift the point by the x y offsets. And let's label that x. Okay, not to add the x, and same thing as y. Okay, so this just needs to be this.x plus equals x, this.y plus equals y. Boom. Okay, so first of all, I always like to tell people to start out simple. Uh, by the way, if you, if you didn't catch that, sys out, S Y S O U T. Control space will generate system out. And let's put empty. Actually, let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's do initial. Okay, let's run that. And let me move this over to somewhere where we can see it a little bit easier. So there we go. That works. All right. Uh, somebody asked in um, the discussion post, you know, like why it's hard to believe you could ever make software, a big piece of software run. And it, it is hard to believe, but the, the way we can do it is that we have testing, testing, testing. Every single function that you write needs to have tests. Every single, you know, module equivalent needs to have tests. Okay. And then when you have larger programs, you have to have tests over each part of the functionality. Microsoft Excel runs a big, huge, unbelievably large set of tests every single night, every single night that, that there's ever been a version of Microsoft Excel because we need to verify that nobody broke anything. Okay. That's how we're able to write big programs. All right, so but in this case, we just want to have a simple program there, and then we're going to leave a blank line because we're now on a new thought, and then we're going to do a translate. Uh, we're going to do a initial dot translate. Um, I was hoping that it would give us a little bit more help. Maybe I don't know why did the Java doc didn't come up. Let's go ahead and move it by two comma five. And then put that there. If I mouse over this, there we go. Shift the point by the x, y offsets. Okay, so it did finally come up with it. I don't know why I didn't do that. Let's let's try that one more time. What happens if I do an empty dot translate? Ah, I didn't didn't do that. I'm not sure why it's not doing that. But all right. Uh, let's do three and three. Okay, now let's. Print out initial and empty. Let's run that. There we go. So empty shifted to 3, 3, and the initial became shifted by 2, 5. So there we go. All right, so this all works. That's great. All right, now I promised you something completely different. So let's go do that. Let's come up with a totally new class here. So again, we're going to do a class. We're going to skip the public. Now, I want to give you something that is completely different. 
and you've never seen before. So you have no way of just kind of faking it. So I'm going to use just people's names, okay? We're going to call this class Bob. And for class Bob, we're going to, now by the way, this isn't going to work. It's not going to compile because I'm going to give it a whole bunch of different types, okay? Instead of an int type, I'm going to give an int type of Andy. That is a type, believe it or not. That's just like another class, right? Okay, Andy, and then for the variable name, I'm going to call it Joe. And then for the next variable type, we're going to call it Claire and Frank. Okay, those, believe it or not, are my member variables. Okay, Joe is a member variable of type Andy, and Frank is a member type of type Claire. All right. We're going to need a constructor. We're going to need a getter, setter. We're going to need a two string. All right. All right. So let's work on the constructor. Remember what we ta I talked to you about for the, the point example, OK? Only two things we need to write a class. First is the class type name, which is Bob. Second, we need the type and name of each member variable. Joe of type Andy and Frank of type Claire. So constructors always start out public and then no return type and instead we need the name of the class Bob and then we need to take parameters and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the we're just gonna let's just do it copy and paste okay select that copy paste copy paste Then we have to uh, set the this dot for, so this constructor is going to return an object of type Bob, and we can refer to that object with the variable this, and we have to set the member field. So we're going to set the Joe field. See right here, Joe is a field, and it's of type Andy. So this dot Joe is going to equal Joe. So we're going to take this parameter here, and put it into the this.joe field. Similarly, this.frank equals Frank. So whatever fields you have as your member fields, you just need to put the this dot equals that field name. That's all you need to do. All right, let's do one getter and setter. We're not going to do them all. But OK, so the getter is going to return a, it's going to be public, it's going to return a what? It's going to return an Andy. That's the type that it's going to return. Get. Is it Andy? No, it's the name of this variable here, Joe. But I do have to capitalize it. It's the only small change I didn't mention. you got to capitalize it. Get Joe. And because it's a getter, it's going to use the this dot. It's not going to take any parameters. And it just has to return this dot Joe. And then the setter setters or voids and instead they are going to take it's going to be set Joe and it's going to take a field of Andy of type Andy we'll call it Joe and all I have to do is set this dot field is Joe equals Joe okay it's the exact same line that you had in the constructor. In fact, a lot of times when I write my constructors, I will actually call the set methods. That way I only have to do this once. Okay, there's only one place where there could be an error. Finally, toString. So um, a toString is public. We know that it returns a string and the name is always the same, toString, and it never takes any parameters. So we are going to return First, the name of the class. So this is going to be a Bob. And then we are going to have each field in order. So Joe equals plus this dot Joe plus comma and then Frank equals Joe. 
plus this dot frank plus close brackets like that and that's actually the whole thing now we've got this whole slew of red x's here and that's because we never <laughs> told it what an andy and a claire is right so this is saying andy can't be resolved claire can't be resolved here you know same thing so but do you believe that that is correct i believe it's correct but i'm sure you're a little bit on the fence about that huh understandable okay i just did a little bit of work and notice there are no more red x's what did i do i gave it exactly what it wanted i gave it an andy class and a claire class okay don't worry about what they do i just tried to fill it in quickly so uh, this does work, but you're still wondering, does this really work? Is that actually going to print anything? Well, let's try. I can't remember the name of the class is the only problem. But let's let's go ahead and um, let's comment all of these lines out. By the way, if you select lines in Eclipse and then control slash, it'll knock them all out for you. And you can undo that later too, which is nice. Okay, so we have uh, what we want is a, <laughs> I can't remember the name. Okay, so we want a Bob class, okay? Bob is going to take an Andy and a Claire, okay? So we're going to create a Bob class. Bob B equals new Bob. Okay, we need an Andy and a Claire. So we get a new Andy. And Andy is going to take, uh, I think it takes an int. And a new Claire, which takes another int. Okay, now it's a small x, meaning it's not used, but that's fine, because then we can do uh, sys out of, come on, don't do that to me, sys out of b. Let's run it. There we go. b is a bob with joe equals, okay, because, because, uh, the Joe is of type Andy, it then recursively printed an Andy A equals 5, and Frank is a Claire, uh, it recursively printed a Claire B equals 3. Um, let me quickly show you for those of you who really want to understand it, which is great. Many of you probably don't, but uh, I'll show you now what I did. So Andy just has an integer, Claire has another integer. I just created simple constructors for them, and then the two string. Uh, is the just the same thing? That's what that's what where it's getting that Andy and Claire from. Okay. Um, so that is an example of how you can create a class all on your own. Now the last thing I'd like you to do for this makeup VC is to do a class on your own like this using complete nonsense. Okay. I don't. Uh, let's say that. Let's have you use. English names just so that it's easy to read okay but I want you to come up with a class of your own name and I want to have two different types of your own different choices of names and two variable names again with your own different types of names and I want you to write the entire class the constructor the two getters and setters the two string okay I want you to write all of that then um, I'm trying to, I'm debating whether I, I won't make you do this, okay? I can tell just looking at it whether it, it should be right. But what you really should do, if you want to make sure that you know how to do this, is go ahead then and write the classes, these simple classes, so that you have something to know that, that this will all compile correctly. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so submit the file that's going to have it's going to look like this so first it's going to have this the same type of stuff yours will be a little bit different here it's going to have the point class just like we went through here it's going to have the um most importantly it's going to have then your named class with these crazy things in here okay and then optionally you can also include these subclasses to actually get something that'll compile um, so that's what you need to submit to me, okay? That uh, so that you've done this. Now, the most important thing after all doing all this is that you just feel super comfortable in making classes, okay? Because you almost every assignment we're going to be doing is going to require you to be writing classes. So you really need to have this down pat, okay?
okay because you don't these classes are hard enough to deal with as uh, 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 in their own right without having to worry about gee how is it our writing class and so um, don't use any compiler tools to do this for you don't do any you know other than the copy and pasting that I showed you going on here okay because you really need to write this all on your own and I can't emphasize this often enough so I will start now the final exam is 100% on paper proctored in person by myself so so if you cannot write this class by yourself without any assistance without any compiler assistance whatsoever then you're gonna have a problem at the final exam and I don't that doesn't help you it doesn't help me okay so please do this on your own and make sure that you understand it well alright good luck to you